Welcome to another episode of the Life Career Roadmap. And today, my special guest is Fabiana Lorezon. So welcome, Fabiana, to the Life Career Roadmap. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Sam. Thanks for inviting me. I'm very pleased to be here and share a little bit of my story, my passion, and all these years that I've been living in Australia. So it's good to be able to share it with you. Thank you very much for being here. Eu vou fazer uma pausa aqui, peraí, só para desligar essa luz, porque tem luz aqui em mim, que já corta esse pedaço. Ok, good. Acho que ficou melhor, né? Sem sombra. Uh -huh. Tá. Sorry. So, Fabiana, let's start uh, off with um, knowing where you come from and what's your professional background. Ok, I'm from Brazil. I was born there and migrated to Australia 17 years ago. Um, I was, um, a lawyer. So my background at uni is I'm a lawyer. Uh, um, then I study business when I start to work with my family over there. So we have a travel agent that is still operating. So it's now 27 years. So I, yes, it's a long time. So we open up that store 27 years ago and still running. So at that moment, I was at university studying and then my mom and dad said, can you come and work with us? And I was finishing my degree and work with them and I got into tourism and I got my passion. And I said to dad, I really want to work here. If the condition is I have to work every year to different places. So I'm going to go on holiday every year. So no matter what, <laughs> I'm traveling. And he said, okay. Yeah. So since then I graduated and then I was um, helping them to sell travel with all my passion and love and knowledge. And then my sister came and joined us. And then so the whole family worked there. We have some um people helping us as well so I have a good team and then I have to move to Australia because of oh, my wait husband's a work we'll be here. Wait, wait a minute let's go back before you come to Australia <laughs> okay okay so it's a long yeah, story so, so let degree... me ask you something which part of Brazil are you from okay I'm from Victoria it's a city north of Rio south of Bahia it's on the coast it's a beautiful little island um, in the state of Spirit Santo. Mm -hmm. So it's sunny year round, no winter. So oh, very beautiful nice. place to live. So in, when you were a child, um, what made you to think about doing, or oh, like a child or a teenager, uh, to study law? What was the decision behind of, oh, I'll be a lawyer? Okay. Um. I think the what gave me um the right decision to do it was because everyone always said to me that I'm very um I can listen to what people say and don't judge much and I could be a very good uh judge because I always listen to both sides of the story and I just you know try to uh get it one in the same place you don't need to agree with each other but I was this kind of every people that everyone wants okay Fabi can solve this because let's talk to Fabi and that's is uh since young I don't know when but I was the, the one uh kind that always help everyone to stop fighting or you know talk and so and I like that people say you I didn't give any trouble so that I was a child that's perfect, let's say. And this is kind of hard because uh, I was good in everything. I was the best kid ever. And the pressure was a lot because I was there. Everyone was, no, Fabi could not do that because she is like, so I was um, in the prison without being the prison in a young age of being put in a, you know, the high um, pedestal, like, like everyone then, expecting 
and everyone so I was in the model way without being a model I'm just you know just nice and try to do my best but then the pressure came in and I said I could do that I could be a good lawyer um, uh, judge and so I have to study law but this pressure that I'm talking about um, was the whole uh, of my the whole time in my childhood uh teenager life and because I was very pressured to be an example and I was an example I could not do anything wrong so pretty much I was a perfect person but to be perfect you're never perfect so to be in that position you Mm -hmm. lose other things Mm -hmm. you become a person that is not your reality you start living in the you know, in the in the way that what people will think if I do that, what people will talk if I do that. So it was hard years, not easy, but even achievements and everything because I was very um, uh, in a very achievement way in everything that I did and that I do. But it's a lot of pressure. And anyway, I survived, <laughs> but I kind of. I don't want to be in that pressure anymore. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be the best one. I don't want to be, anyway, it's hard. But yeah, that was happened. So then I thought maybe I could do that. So I studied law. And then I realized Mm -hmm. you need something else, not just to be a lawyer in Brazil. You need to have people that you know that's going to be referring you, if you have someone in your family that's going to be, okay, you have that. So it's kind of, um, you have to know the people, have to have in a group of people. And I didn't like that because I'm not this kind of person that's going to find someone to be able to give me a way. So it's a network to work. interest that has an interest in that. It's not genuine, I would say. No. And then when I realized that, I say, I don't want to do that because... It's not me. I don't want to be, you know, chasing for something just to be able to join the group. I'm not going to be part of that group. Then in between that course, I said, I'm going to finish it because I started. And then we had this opportunity to work uh, as a, I work with my family as a travel agent and I say, that's freedom. I don't want to be, you know, I want a freedom. I want to travel. I want to no more i want to visit places i want to experience so that's why i start passionately travel um while people in my age were just like studying or um pleasing someone else to be able to join the club and i decided a different path so and i don't regret it i tell you (laughs) wonderful so coming and joining um, a family business and a business is a challenge itself, but when you are working uh, in a family environment as a business, sometimes things get a little bit of um, a bit uh, as a clash of ideas and sometimes mm-hmm. it's possible to say everything because you are in the family environment. So um, how was for you uh, work in your family environment and being able to keep a good relationship and as you guys have been running the business for 27 years and you are here and you're still working as part of the business, but the other side of the world. Okay. So it was, uh, was hard, especially because I was the front uh, face of the business. So I was the um, commercial side, the sailing side. And my dad at the time, he was very conservative. He is conservative and he likes to control. And so I had my space, but I was young. He had all the experience from uh, biz- uh, previous business and stuff. And I decided, so it was tough because I could sell. I was good at what I was doing, but I could not manage everything because he was behind it. So he didn't want me to cross the line. You were selling, you got the job, you got that, you sell, you travel, 
but the business is mine, kind of that. Mm-hmm. What, I, what gave me an option, I said to him, I want to study. So I did my management um, MBA to be able to understand all the stories, all the steps, and analyze the business as a business person, not just as someone that was selling that. And he let me do it, was a FGV um, university. And then when I finished, I said, I'm ready. I can run this by myself. Um, I can change this. I want to change that. And of course, he was very conservative. So before moving to Australia, we worked together ten, for 10 years. Mm-hmm. And that was amazing years. Our business just grew for so uh, much. He analyzed my, my ideas. But and even that time, I have to have all the permissions from him. So when we had dinner, family dinners, uh, meetings and everything together, all the news, all the stories were related to trouble. And I said to him in them, I cannot stand 24 hours talking about my family, about what we do, work and stuff. So at this point, I decided to move house and live by myself because I said, we have to have a gap in separate things. Lunch, coffee, lunch, dinner. We talk about travel. We talk about clients. We talk about, I said, this is not the life that I need my space. That was good. Because so that was three years before moving to Australia. So I was by myself, working, very independent, happy, traveler, um, engaged, organized my wedding. And uh, then I have to move. <laughs> Again. That was a big shock. <laughs> a big shock. Now, now, everything that you wanted, the gap, you had a huge gap. So but before you got the gap, uh, the thing I want to ask you um, what was, as a child, your first idea of going traveling? So which place was in your mind that uh, made you be curious to know? So okay. or, uh, because like I tell you, when I was a kid, I want to travel, but I had no idea about the world, right? It was just what I, I could hear. It was my well, my knowledge, but I, I didn't know much about it. We didn't have all the, well, we have the internet to go there and, and see all the things that we don't know. That time was just wandering. It's just the dreams of people yes. and coming back and tell us what they have seen. So it was yes. my, my knowledge and dreams were based on someone else's dream, uh, travels, <laughs> let's say this way. Okay, I have a uh, a funny story that uh, changed my life. And every time that I remember it, I say it's in our subconscious uh, thinking. Like I said before, I was very independent, even very young. I didn't cry in going to school. My mom said, I look back, say, bye, mom. I was three years old. And I just like, this is my world, you know. And she was like, you're not going to cry. I say, no, no. <laughs> I'm fine. Three years. <laughs> <Did you? laughs> so... That was me, and I can do everything. That's that's what I, I I tell people. I can do if I have the strength, if I study hard, if I, do, I can do. And I don't know how old I was, but the story is uh, there was this uh, cartoon. There was a koala in the cartoon. I can't remember which one it was, but I, I it was something very close to me. And I look at that and I watch it many times and I love it. And back to seven, eight, nine years old, I can remember, I had to report and that was like this um, storytelling that you have to write and tell about something. And my mom said to me that I invented that my dad brought me a koala from Australia and I could tell everyone in my school, that I really had a quality home. And people believed me. <laughs> and that was a funny story because my, I cannot remember it that much, but my mom said, people are asking me, how is your koala going? Doing? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. And then she said, oh, maybe because of that cartoon that you saw and that you love. Okay. But I never dreamed about coming to Australia. But that was in my mind 
and okay, a few years passed and I met Bruno in high school. So it's been a while together and we always dream about living abroad. We didn't want to um, stay in Brazil. We start traveling together, uh, like I said, <laughs> uh, walking and traveling. Um, since I started working with my dad, I was about 18, 19 years old. So we started traveling since that age together. And we say we want to live here or live somewhere or try. So that happens after 15 years um, together, we moved. So, yeah, that's what happened. So the dream about living overseas was always in our head. But um, the funny thing is some people move to Australia for many reasons, more opportunity or uh, freedom or find something or find yourself. For us, was security. Mm-hmm. We just want to live in a place that we could be ourselves. We didn't have to be someone else. We didn't have to please anyone. We did not have to be someone else that wasn't us Mm -hmm. so that makes us to say bye and move back move to australia australia came in the in the lucky way we didn't choose perth we didn't choose australia he was transferred i mean he had got a job so Mm -hmm. that was fortunate thing so so and then you both are workaholic let's say this way because i know you and you are workaholic right and both of you we're both crazy workers <laughs> yes so uh moving yeah. to australia this transition and creating a wider gap between what you had before your lifestyle you had before to a new place where you didn't know the culture the system or the people here yeah so how was this transition? Did you got uh, get shocked with anything or shocked by anything that you saw um, lived or how okay. was the experience? Uh, the story is uh, when Bruno applied for this job, uh, they gave us tickets and hotel and invite us to come during his um um how do i say when they yes so we came luckily before applying anything i came to perth for five days to visit to see uh and i was lucky enough to say okay i'm not coming back you better be good you better pass because i'm coming to live here (laughs) i love this place I really want to stay. So then everything changed in six months. So the first day that he applied for the job until we moved, that was six months. Mm -hmm. So that was a shock because we just applied, he just applied and then everything went through so quickly and I have to find someone to my place. And that time, I always say this, sometimes it's not the right moment because my business was in person. So people used to go to the office to talk about travel, to have a cake, to drink coffee, to talk about good things. Because when you go to a travel agent, you want to talk about travel dreams and stuff. So the way that we used to do business was like that. So people come to us to talk, to experience that. Then I say, maybe I could do that in Skype at that time overseas I could manage to join in and organize um, a time and then but customers they they weren't um, ready for it Not they the didn't want thing. that experience they want to be present so even if I want to do online business my clientele wasn't ready so didn't work so there was a very um, missing uh, point into that. So I have to open up a new business in Australia to be able to work and start all over without knowing anyone, without knowing where people travel to from Australia. So that took, before I opened up my own business, I worked for someone else just to know a little bit of how does it work. 
But that was the hard point because even if I was subtle and had all the systems in my computer, I could work from Australia and do exactly the same thing I was doing in Brazil. The customers didn't want that. <laughs> Then, of course, COVID came. And now it doesn't matter where I am. People are still following, working, you know, <laughs> get that. But that's a different story. You are right in the right place, but is not meant to be yet. That's, that's kind of tricky, but it was true. Talk about, um, I'd say, five, six years after I moved to start working online in a way that just is beginning. And then, of course, now it yes. doesn't matter. Uh, Everybody when, knows. When you went to work for someone else, so let's say uh, as many newcomers, uh, what they face, because... Uh, one of the barriers is the language. So, uh, of course, working with uh, travels, you have at least a basic English knowledge. So how was for you this transition regarding uh, feeling that okay. you would communicate in English? Because it's not just knowing okay. English, it's communicating. Okay. The first thing I did was asking my sister to write a very nice letter about my work. And I didn't tell anyone there was owner of a business over there because that might be like, oh, I'm going to employ you and you're not going to stay because, of course, you want to do your own business. So then I, I applied for a few, few jobs and I got accepted. And then at the end, they said no to me. Because even if I have the knowledge and use systems and sell and, and do everything, they say, you don't know where people travel to from here. You don't know if I'm going to ask you, I want to go to Bali or I want to go to Byron Bay. I have no idea at that time what people do there. I didn't know about the culture. And I had to agree with them. How can I sell something that I, I don't even have a clue Mm -hmm. And I go back to my thinking and say, I have to start knowing this place, traveling here to see what people do. So then I didn't go um, start working travel. I did local jobs, work in a cafe, work in a lawyer um, office, um, doing normal things, making coffee, um, The idea was talking to people and know the culture. Where do you travel? What do you go? I'm not, this is temporary. I'm not going to be doing this forever. But I really need to get in contact and practice my English as well to be able to sell. Because one thing is you have your English that you can buy things. You can say the basic things. But how can you sell in English and convince someone to buy something if your English is not good enough? Yeah. You have to convince them. That's the hard part. So then I did that for one year and a half. Uh, and then I said, no, I'm ready now. I think I know most of this. I started studying a few places, travel to uh, that places too. And I started applying again. But then I decided I don't want to go to a corporate office that people... For the beginning, I did apply for that. And I say, I want to go to a store, a uh, place that I can work and meet people and see see people. I don't want to be online or in the back office. Mm -hmm. um, so I applied to a few jobs and I got in, in a big um, Harvey World Travel uh, in Carousel, the first job that I had. And I was the top one seller. I only worked there for eight weeks. Because I said, it's too much for me. Uh, all the races um, I had because of my English, because of I'm not from here and blah, blah, blah. And I said, I cannot support this. If I'm going to work, I need someone to respect. I'm not Australian. I'm never going to be Australian that was born here. Um, so I didn't enjoy it. And then I said, I don't want to be doing this work anymore. I want to change. I want to do something else. I applied for some office work. And then 
another travel agent from the same group called me and say, why did you leave? Where did you leave? I heard so good news about you. And I said, ah, oh, okay. So because of my first eight weeks, they talk about me all the time because I was a very good achieved um, uh, salesperson and I was good talking to the immigrants. We have lots of immigrants that time that people didn't have patience to sell because sometimes they don't have enough money. They don't want to, they're not sure yet what they're going to do. They want to spend as much as they can, but to be able to get in a, I mean, the best way possible with the money that they have. So I could understand that. And I saw a possibility there and I say, okay, I'm going to go and work for you, but I have to be honest with you. I have my business in Brazil. I don't want to be treated like that. He did. I'm immigrant, but I can sell. I know what I'm doing and blah, blah, blah. And she looked at me, when do we start? <laughs> <laughs> so then I got my position there and I worked for five years, three years in the office and two years. I decided to work solo and have my clientele and said to her, I'm going to be working from home. I'm going to start see if I can work, I mean, for myself and see if I can work like that because I don't want to go to the office. Um, I, I really want to build my own clientele. And I did it for five years. Um, networking was a key for me to change that. While I was into photography, um, Wait a minute, something okay. came in here. Okay. <laughs> what is up behind the scenes that we don't know about photography? Let's go. <laughs> okay, so during that time that I was in travel, I was also following a passion in photography. My grandfather was a photographer and I said, I've got the time, I've got the camera, so I, I want to be doing something that is not travel. And that I can combine traveling, take photos, and you know. So I did um, work as a photographer for 10 years, 10 plus years. And during that time, in between doing both works, part time in one job, part time in another job, I was uh, lucky enough to photograph one of the cruise. Uh, campaigns for one of uh, the person that works as travel managers today mm -hmm. and I was there taking photos and I met my manager um, there and then I said oh I'm Fabiana I work for blah 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 and I'm doing photography here uh, do you know uh, if I can apply for a job there if, if one day I want to join the group and she said I know you I heard a lot about you this is my business card. When you're ready, you call me. Oh, my goodness. I got this phone. And I, I know. <laughs> I know. And I kept the card with me in a safe place. And one day, my husband said, now is the time. You're not going to work for this person anymore. You're going to start working and building your own business. Uh, and I call her. Hi, you remember me? I'm Fabiana, blah, blah, blah. I said, yes, when you want to meet. In one month, I start with the group. And that's today. It's been 10 years that I'm with them. So networking, you never know what you find, who is there, and what is going to be the possibilities for you. Creating. That's what happened. <laughs> Yeah, well done. So now you are working uh, with a group, but you are work by yourself. Is that correct? Yeah. So we are 600 people, mm -hmm. uh, independent, but we have this group that's behind. Uh, it's a way of negotiation, um, negotiation, travel, uh, plane tickets, hotels and everything as a group. So I'm not is small so I'm actually very big even if it's just myself so I have a uh, very good deals competition I can you know I can I I don't at the moment South America I'm the king I'm the queen, the of queen. South America, I know so that 
<laughs> the queen, yeah. So all these steps came and uh, and part of this group. So we all independent. I work online, and because of that, I can work anywhere. Wow. And they let me do it. So for the past of seven years, I've been working in Singapore and Perth as a flying flyout person. <laughs> But now, like, let's say that uh, you moved to Singapore as well because your husband's yes. job, right? So yes. how was this transition also? Because you were settled here in Perth. You had your house, you had your clientele doing photography and also uh, selling uh, travels. And, and then you moved to Singapore and everyone was, oh, my goodness, we are missing. Uh, I know. I was in shock too when we had another uh, two months this time to move and I had to get rid of the house and, you know, everything, move and send. And even my dog, we have to decide if you're going to send him over or stay in Perth because the idea at the beginning was my husband would be based in Singapore and I was flying fly out every two, three weeks uh, during a few years. But we decide, okay, the dog goes. We are um, only flying in and out without the dog because of quarantine in Australia, of course. We rented our house. And so home is going to be for now Singapore. And we'll be flying fly out to Perth. But the thing is, photography, I have to be present. I have to do all this uh, physically job. So could not be online. Mm-hmm. Travel. The group let me work from Singapore. I am the only one now working overseas for the whole year, I would say, because you can travel and work somewhere, from somewhere. That's freedom. But to be able to be fixed in Singapore and work, um, I'm the only one that that they allow now to do that. So I'm very happy about it. And um, was very shocked because I said to him, how can I be able to afford to travel to Perth to work as a photographer without increasing the price that I was doing and still selling um, tickets and travel and be able to maintain myself because what's the point to be to spend more money than we are here to save money, not to spend more money. So then everything works well. Mm-hmm. Um when I always say that uh, if has to be, has to be, I always ask myself and question all the time to say, if I have to keep doing this, let's find a way. Mm-hmm. And I always find a way to pay for all that stuff to um, pay for the tickets. And with the business that I was having was paying for everything. So I didn't have to ask for Bruno's money or, you know, take out of what we are saving, um, you know, the way to be in Singapore. So this happened and I could keep it. But then COVID came. (laughs) Oh, it's another shock situation. So how was, especially for your industry, both industry photography and also uh, traveling. So how was that situation for you? Yeah, it was hard because we have to choose one side. Of course, Singapore because of him. And the borders were closed, um, both of them. And I couldn't do photography. I couldn't do, I had to, you know, cancel everything, of course. And travel-wise, um, I was able to work that time, solving problems, rescuing people that were overseas or stuck somewhere, or I would say lucky enough to be able to sell trips out of Brazil because Brazil didn't close the borders and some people just decided to travel. And as an entrepreneur, I think we have to find a way to survive and find a possibility that no one else could see it. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, some people didn't want to wait to get vaccinated in Brazil. So they had money, they have American visa, 
and they were willing to go to Mexico for two weeks before being able to go to the U.S. And as you're there, you were able to get the two shots for free. doesn't matter your nationality, even mm-hmm. if you're on the tourism visa. So we did this as a vaccination <laughs> trip. So we Dear, sell tickets, we could sell hotels. <laughs> huh? Never thought. Never thought about No. Okay. So, yeah, a lot of people did that. A lot. So Mexico didn't need a visa. You could stay there 14 days quarantine. So they have to be in the hotel and stuff. Then you'll be able to go to the U.S., get your vaccination uh, shot. So there is a tourism that people, and then you're free because you could go to other places and, you know, as nothing would happen. So that was one thing that we did. In Australia, the other thing that we did was um, all the states were closed. So people could not travel between the states. They have to be in their own area, sometimes the zones and stuff. So I came up with an idea to be able to sell um, and hire camper vans, so Mm -hmm. motorhomes. So people, um, I was the queen of motorhomes in Australia, so I was selling to everybody out of like East Coast, West Coast, Everyone was on motorhome <laughs> and we could get very good deals. So I wasn't selling that much tickets, of course, but I was selling a lot of rentals with motorhome. So that was amazing. Until today, I have people asking me, you didn't know, I have people come to me say, I'm still selling motorhomes. Or <laughs> yeah, so this is the example how we, we create all the stuff. In it. And Maldives, everybody in Brazil was like, was dying to go to Maldives with a very discounted price uh, during COVID. So yeah, Maldives was a big hit. We sell a lot out of Brazil. So because of this both business, one side was closed, but we could sell different ways. And then so that's why I was very busy during COVID, even if no one was sell, um, traveling overseas. So in all this work that you did um, for these years, and especially um, during a COVID period, so end up giving you... Oh, let you to receive a big award is that right yes that was right i did work so hard <laughs> <laughs> and the other thing that was uh good for me i was in singapore during the whole covid and borders here open up earlier than australia Mm -hmm. So I was able to travel to Europe as soon as they opened up the borders. I said to them, to Bruno, we're going to go. I don't know where. I'm going to leave this country because I'm here for so long. I need to breathe. I need to see the world. And I was showing everyone how it was to be in uh, Europe after COVID. You went to Italy, right? So I went to, yeah, um, Italy, France, and Germany. Germany. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Uh, And then I start telling everyone how was it. I was able to travel. And Australia was closed that time. So that was, I was showing people, say, let's plan because it's going to open. Tickets are going to be expensive then. But if you buy now. So I actually start selling before the borders open. Mm-hmm. So that's what put me in a position that everybody was waiting to that to be open, and I was already selling a lot of tickets for people to I, just waiting to see. I was one of them. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I could pick a little bit what was happened because I was in a up from outside, you know, and see what was doing here. So that was a very strategic position for me, and I start running. Before everyone else, that's that's the, what happened. When you got the uh, the prize, so tell us more about the award that you got as uh, travel. Uh, okay, yes. So because I got early than everyone else, um, everybody was so desperate to travel, especially immigrants that were stuck here without seeing the family for so long. 
uh, uh, my award was the most improved uh, travel managers 2022 and 23. So that was um, a big award. And then I got top one sales with Qatar, Emirates, Latam, uh, and still doing it uh, in a high, good position with them. And that gives me um, more flights to sell, more seats to sell, more price-wise to confirm to people. So it's not just to be, when you are in that position, you are the VIP, the top sellers, or that helps you to be able to convert that to your clients. So you have a special line if you need any help. Because nowadays, especially during COVID, uh, everyone uh, reduced the number of staff working in travel. Uh, and that's understandable. So if you have to change anything or to do something, you have to call and stay in the, over the phone for so many hours, so long. And to be able to have this keep the line thing, uh, that was a plus to my job because I could do easily and help everyone in a quick way, very effective way, I would say. And as a, a higher achiever, uh, you also, while you were here in Perth, you helped the community a lot. So you came with uh, one of your projects, helping uh, the Brazilian community. So mm -hmm. what was like, the idea on and what was the outcome for you? Okay, um, that was an interesting question because I always uh, love to help and give it back. I think uh, I learned a lot in uh, Australia when I moved and because we didn't have a good community around uh, mm -hmm. in the sense of having people to help the, for example, I just arrived and didn't know much things. We didn't have this close community to help. I found that uh, I could do something to be able to improve business, to improve the way that we connect, and to be able to get the community together. And with that um, connection, we'll be able to learn, we'll be able to share, we'll be able to share stuff for some instance or even share knowledge or learn a lot about something that might be um you know in front of you and you didn't know because you don't have time the time to talk about this kind because you're always busy working a lot and blah 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 so when i joined travel managers i had all this um uh induction and everything in sydney and when I was there, I saw these four girls, uh, nothing to do with travel, that was following on Instagram. And they was about to uh, do a talking. And I went to that place by myself and I looked at them, four different girls that were having like their own business, but then starting a new business in parallel. And they were talking, one had a kid, one had, uh, just graduated, the other one wants to change the job. And, and I look at that and that was so inspiring to me and the way that the business was. And I said, I could do something in that instance to get people to talk, to talk about their life, what did they, they did it right, what we can learn from this, inspire people. And I didn't want to create something that was based on my experience. So I said, we have to share and be able to, everyone that is involved is going to get the same visibility. So if you are come here and then you're doing a voluntary job, whatever you do, you'll be able to expose yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have a business, that's a free um, promotion for you. If not, so that was amazing. Um, we're coming back this year with an event, I would say, because I miss that so much. I learned that year so much with anyone else, like that was part of the group. The energy was good. And now it's a business that is registered as a non-profitable, uh, um, non-for-profit business. So it's accepted by the Western Australia government. 
So I'm just waiting the right time because it's a lot of work. Oh, yeah. It depends Behind on me a lot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then we are planning the new one soon. So to, we hope to get most people involved as well and be able to celebrate it again after COVID. Yes. And the other thing that uh, Fabiana has uh, been involved uh, lately is about the beach tents, tennis. So I you, know <laughs> you now are the girl around the world playing beach tennis, going to tournaments. And what is about? Tell us what, what was the um, motivation to move to do some motivation? Beach? Yes. I was watching uh, one of the mentors, one of my mentors um, that I follow a lot, and I could see the transformation on his body and his mind and saying that he found a passion about uh, judo, that guy, Mm -hmm. and then he was going and training and doing, and that helped him to mentally be focused, to mentally be prepared, to get your body ready for all this kind. And everybody was talking about the book that you have to start your morning at 5 a.m. and blah, blah, blah. And I was just like, this is not for me. I don't, I, I need my sleep. And it's fine. I was, I was trying to be able to be at five o'clock and then do that and meditate and blah, 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 blah. I cannot <laughs> do all, that. All these are grand Not for me. for you to be successful and in peace with yourself. <laughs> exactly. I'd say, no, I work too late night. I have just two uh, time zones or three time zones. I cannot do a routine like that. But I said to myself, I need to find something that is a passion. That is not just work. That is not computer. That's something that I can grow. And when I do things, I really like to improve myself doing it. So I don't go there and just play. Just because. If I'm doing something, I know I want to improve. I don't want to be professional, of course, but I want to be able to play with anyone even a professional person could play with me that's my goal so I start training I had a coach here three times a week very disciplined um and um that changed me changed the way that I could say no and I could say yes to myself I could say okay this is my training and nothing's gonna change that I could get uh more time to myself and of course I had to delegate to bring more people to my work to work for me and with me to be able to be away because before that was 100% myself and I just you cannot do that if you don't have a team if you don't have someone helping you so it wasn't um, I have to evolve in that way, to be able to achieve that. So beach tennis for me, I played Saturdays and, month and Sundays, and that's amazing. And during the week, I played three times. Mm. So five times a week as my goal to be able to improve my focus, improve my uh, mental ability, and the way that we think. I heard, and that's true, that whatever sport, racket sports you do, that really helps your mental because you have to be quick, you have to think fast, <laughs> you have to plan. And it's all about strategy. And that's life. It's all about strategy. Yeah. So, <laughs> so and then how I many love tournaments it. have you been part of? Like around because you have been okay. Uh, so, you in Brazil, so he in Australia, in Singapore. Yeah, I had one in Brazil. So the, okay, so two in Singapore, and mm-hmm. Singapore, I am the first female Singapore in the ranking here. Oh. Yes, <laughs> and Bruno and I won uh, the mixed double shoe, so we are the top one. We won two times oh. uh, last year, this year. I know we're working hard on it, uh, so we tried our best. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then I play in Brazil. And I lost in semifinals. 
Um, I'm going to Brazil next month for another tournament and training. So I try to mix a bit now. So work, training, and fun and travel. So why not? You know, why I not? can do that. So now I'm going to Perth. There is a new tournament uh, by the end of this month. And then Sydney by the end of the year. Yes, a shout out to uh, Tuko uh, that is running the beach tennis and Clarissa as well. So uh, well done. For yes, that. amazing. Amazing to uh, make their dreams come true here, right? Because it was a big uh, I like idea for Tuko to do something else than uh, fencing and um, he could... True. Uh, Put everything together so I need to get him here as well to ask his journey because yes please <laughs> yes he's uh, he has been doing pretty good with Clarissa doing pretty well uh, and bringing these yes they become, are become more popular because in Brazil when I was traveling there uh, everywhere you could see people playing uh, beach tennis and uh, I remember before when I came to Australia one thing that I missed a lot was the the sports, going to the gym and having community and was so different here. People are so by themselves doing things, right? In Brazil, you go and you talk to sure. everyone, you make a team and you go and have fun. Uh, yeah. Train together. So I miss that a lot. So here I went to some um, beach volleyball. There were indoor uh, volleyball uh, teams. Um was nice but it was not the same and at the same time I was was uh, missing something yes was missing true. something and of course and it's very addictive I know <laughs> <laughs> I quite like I went there you, it's and, nice. and it's for all levels doesn't matter what your age and your levels your fitness levels it's just like you can stop playing and it's just uh, amazing amazing so uh, I found my other ground you know and uh, one that I quite like is um, doing indoor biking I'm very competitive on that and also I wow. like, uh, weight lifting so I'm back from Brazil and feeling completely pumped to get back to my shape and uh, doing amazing and have my personal training help me and getting uh, the competition if my husband let's do it let's see because we are very competitive yeah you have to <laughs> yes and that's good for us. It doesn't matter. I just want to have fun, you know, and play and do my best and improve. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about beach tennis. That's right. So Fabiana. Yes, now, every day. And of course, the 10. The 10. I like the, the very 10. 10. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. And how you put everything together now? Because you live in Singapore. Um, what is the next step or the next dream uh, for Fabiana and uh, Rodrigo, no, so Rodrigo, hey, Rodrigo. No. Bruno, Bruno, look, Bruno. Hello, sorry, yeah, Bruno. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, what's the next for you guys? Is something uh, waiting or uh, on the pump waiting to happen or is this like, we don't no. know? No, no, we have kind of few plans. Um, we came with the idea to stay here two years and now we end up seven, eight years. But we have a dog here and he's 13. So he won't probably be able to go back to Australia and s survive in the quarantine uh, mm -hmm. for another 10 days in Melbourne and travel to Perth is a lot. So we decide now we're going to stay here until he's gone. So mm -hmm. it's... Five years, six years, three years, four years, we don't know. Uh, but until then, um, because I can work from anywhere, he's good at his job. So the idea is keep that way and travel to Perth or to Australia um, as often as we can. Uh, because now I'm not only based for for Perth, so I'm selling Australia-wide. So I have to be visiting to other cities too. So that's good. Uh, but we had... With the life that we create, that I can, I work online for more than 12, 15 years now. Mm -hmm. So while people start working online, I'm already there. So I designed this lifestyle and I really wanted to live that way. So my dream now is to be able to work exactly from anywhere and be traveling. So enjoy the summer in Italy, the winter in Canada, or it doesn't matter where I am. Put this in a position that I'm dream I'm selling travel and actually traveling. That's and playing beach tennis where I can. That's <laughs> that's my goal 
for the next uh, years when we um, settle more. And Bruno needs to speed up. I said to him, you have to find a way to follow me on this. <laughs> so no, no, what his chapter, what's going to be, but we are working on it. <laughs> So um, back a little bit to the beginning when you said you were selling uh, travels for migrants. So what are the main dreams uh, migrant in coming, uh, migrants coming to you had? Like you said that they had a, uh, not the shorting money, but they want to use the most of their money to get a holiday. So uh, what else did you find uh, working with migrants regarding their uh, experiences, their desires, their dreams, and things that they have done mm -hmm. in Australia that you could see them uh, growing, progressing, and having the life that they wanted? Okay. Um, the majority of the... Um students that comes here they come with a dream that study improve their english and migrate so when but there is a step to follow they have to renew the visa so they cannot travel they short of money because 20 hours of work or they there is a gap until they can actually live a little bit a stable life so i have these migrants that they are in a very low budget. They only can afford to travel once. Maybe they stay here a few years and they, they can go back to Brazil, but they want to do something. So we have these special uh, options for Bali. Uh, Bali is very popular because it's cheap. They go even Eastern states as well. Uh, then the option is, that I'd say, without just two destinations, Bali, Australia, and then the third would say go back to Brazil to visit parents, family, and come back. Uh, what we can facilitate is we can divide installments, some tickets in Brazil with Brazilian credit card because of our two business. So we have been helping them, even if the mom is paying or the family are paying for them, uh, that makes them a little bit uh, more affordable travel. I'd say that. So we have this agreement with Emirates, Qatar. So that's what we've been um, growing on it to help them to be able to get, stay here, save money and pay installments in Brazil. Mm -hmm. um, then when they are in a position of, Okay, I don't need to only go to Brazil. I can breathe a little bit. So I've got a little bit more organized uh, life here. So they start in going to Europe, you know, uh, travel to the US. So it's kind of growing. Asia is the main thing because it's close to us and far away from Brazil. So while they're here, why not Singapore, Malaysia, why not uh, Thailand and other cities here, Japan now? And yeah, it's been very popular. Hey, very, very. So, and probably you have been working with uh, uh, students or students, where were students before and now they are well established here in Australia. And yes. So we see now a lot of Australians. Journey. <laughs> yes. And that's amazing. We've been with, we, we help them so in so many ways. Now they have kids. Now uh, is a different approach and different holidays. It's, it's been amazing to be able to be part of that uh, life. Okay. So it's a, a question now for you uh, as you work uh, with dreams and, and travels. So what kind of advice would you give to someone who is overseas wanting to come to Australia? What would you recommend regarding traveling and regarding moving to a new country what do they need to do before they come okay uh, I can give you some tips uh, like what happened to me because I had English uh, basic English that really helps me to be able to come here with a little knowledge I wasn't just, you know, lost and starting from the scratch. So if you come here, please study English at least to be able to communicate in a basic way. 
So you're not going to be uh, that lost, I'd say. The second, finish and have a degree. Doesn't matter what you do. Australia is a country that needs people, but they need skilled people, not just normal people. If you come with a skilled, um, whatever is it, you're going to be able to bypass, bypass that way easily to be able to fix your residency here. Um, we Brazilians, because of our way of living, the way that we've been, our environment over there, we always been, um, I'd say we know a lot of things. We've been in a position to be skilled in different things. So bring that with you because here they are not like that. They only know one thing or two and we have a, a whole flexibility of possibilities, let's say that way, of doing things and uh, learn things. So come with that spirit too. So, and one advice, the most important is don't try to live what you do life in Brazil in Australia. Here, it's a different country, it's a different world, it's a different rules. You, if you start living in Australia with your mind in Brazil, your mindset in Brazil, you're not going to grow. And you cannot live in Brazil with a mindset in Australia, of course. So come here with an open mind and embrace what they have here. Get the opportunity, network, and find your possibilities. Have your mind open because this is a country that you can survive, you can grow, you can be part of, and they are waiting for you. But mm -hmm. don't come as just like empty hands without knowing anything and starting over. It's going to be harder for you. You can get it, but it's going to take a while, longer and expensive too. Okay. And for someone who is here, a newcomer, a migrant who is here uh, and could not find their feet yet, what like the dreams that they wanted or things, a career or life, what is the advice they would give it to them? Okay. Everything has your, their own way to do it. So with my story, I had a no to start working in my area and I have to go to the orders. I understand that. And I have to go do a little bit turn and back to my way stronger. And I just understand the way that it was. So if the things are not getting through to you, it's because it's missing something. Could be a network, could be your English, could be your skills or could be that you're not in the right time at the moment mm -hmm. so don't give up it's coming to you but you just understand what you need to improve and why because at the end of the day it's not about you it's about what you bring to the table and mm -hmm. what skills you have it's not because you failed or because someone else is lucky and then you are not no, just get that, have them open mind and embrace that, learn something, and then you're going to get that. That's that's what I believe. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. So, Fabiana, thank you very much for your time mm. chatting with me and uh, passing on your uh, life journey, career experience, life career journey experience. And uh, it was amazing. And I admire you. I am one of your clients and I enjoy my I know. My, thank my, you. I also my, admire my, you a lot. Because we know so each other for a long time. <laughs> And I say, I say normally when people say, oh, but you could buy online. Yeah, I could. But if anything happens, Fabiana is there, just standing by. So I can ring her anytime and say, Fabiana, something happened. And she solves my situation. So we never know exactly. what happened. And, and also is giving the, um, uh, the knowledge to people that know what they are doing. 
right? I can spend like hours searching about the best flight and end up buying something that is not worthy buying and get in trouble. So I prefer put my decision uh, to someone that can help me to understand. Oh, what I really appreciate that. Thank can you so me? much, Sema. And I, I had so a much. wonderful experience there on my last trip that I had to change a few things by the last minute and it was wonderful, right? You got the best deal for me. Yes, of course. Yes, and then that's why you are just thriving all the time because you do uh, what you do to help your clients to to have the dream a uh, trip that they want, right? Without Yes. And one thing I'm very proud of in this 27 years uh, that is turning this year in travel, we, our company, did not have one client, one client that did not board the plane because of our problem. They might have been away because of problems with the plane, the crew, the weather, or they missed the plane or uh um, any other symptoms, but not from because of what we did. So I'm very pleased about that and to be able to say we did not have any passengers that didn't board the plane because of us. Well done. And thank you very much for your services. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm thank sure you, guys, you, have, you have enjoyed this conversation uh, with Fabiana here and uh, learned a lot about her journey and all the things that going through uh, in someone else's life. Like any any uh, one of us can go through different pathways, different uh, aggravations, or different uh, challenges. So it's the way we see things and how you can solve them. So um, Fabiana just showed the resilience of finding solutions for the moment in life um, or moments in life that she had to, to do or think about uh, alternatives, how she could uh, run her business and continue uh, her legacy, right? Sure, and yes. <laughs> so thank you very much, Fabiana. And I uh, love chatting with you and if you are here watching us, remember to subscribe to the channel and see you next time. Bye-bye.